Take a moment to look up. Follow the, the arc of this incredible roof line. The flow, the interconnectedness, the beauty of the bamboo. Incredible bamboo structures like this are a place of art. They're a work of art. And no one wants to sit in a box. No one wants to think in a box. It brings to mind the phrase, bend like bamboo. Here at Green School Bali, our creative, innovative, organic, sometimes beautifully messy community and school brings this phrase to life in the most vibrant way. Today I want to help us all open our minds to a shift in education. I want to help us think outside of the box. I want to help us think of the future and I want to help us think of the now. In simplest terms, I want us to adapt. You know, they say change is the only constant. So it goes to reason that if everything is always changing, then we continually need to improvise, to bend and to adapt. And the, f the ability to adapt is a fundamental life concept. And I know I'm not the only person in this room who thinks schools should teach fundamental life concepts. So when designing a new paradigm of learning in this ever-changing world, one of the most important things we need to teach our children is the ability to adapt. Now, the ability to adapt, I believe, is a fundamental life concept. It defines life as we know it. And I know that's a big statement, so calm down, chill out, and I'll put it into context for you. From the Big Bang until now, everything is a result of life's ability to adapt. Atoms becoming molecules, becoming compounds, unicellular organisms forming multicellular organisms, water-based animals to land-based animals, human evolution. The evolution of this human-centric planet, you know, like it or not, this is what we've got. And every new stage on this planet Earth has been driven by the ability to adapt. In my life, there is a common thread of adapting that runs through my most powerful learning experiences. You know, I liked school. I was good at school. But when I finished my first university degree and I took a gap year, I entered the real world, I quickly realised that nearly everything that I'd learnt was meaningless. So my gap year turned into a gap decade. True story. <laughs> I used my understanding of how I learnt, thanks high school, and my understanding of how to solve problems, thanks science degree, as I spent 10 years travelling around the world doing different jobs, basically upskilling myself in the 21st century skills. I forced myself to adapt to different environments, different cultures, different jobs, different languages, different routines, different schedules, different wages, different languages. I challenged myself to adapt using travel as a medium. And you know, there's a lot you can learn by inserting yourself into a foreign culture and country, especially before Google Maps, Google Translate, Traveloka, and what else do I use? Grab taxi, yeah. Skills like communicate, collaborate, think critically, solve problems, think creatively. I used these skills over and over as I adapted again and again in my working travels. But let's go back a little bit further than my youthful days. The theory of evolution, that's me over there on the right. Now the theory of evolution, now I'm going to adapt here for you because I want to get this right. I quote... Over many generations, so adaptation, over many generations, through the process of natural selection, organisms' physical and behavioural features adapt to function better in the face of environmental challenges. End quote. Thank you, Google. So basically, adapting helps us function better in the face of environmental challenges. Mm, there's a hot topic, yeah. Now think about human evolution. I'm not just talking about standing upright, walking on two feet, opposable thumbs, language. You know, they're really cool and it's very important. But I want you to think about civilizations and cultures. Think about 
technology, cities, language, communication, medicine, sports and recreation, you know, we've really treated ourselves. As much as I love Mother Nature and respect my Mother Earth, as much as I wish we'd done a better job with this thing called civilization, this planet that humans have created, modern civilization, is pretty awesome. We moved out of a cave to a civilization that can access and communicate the totality of global information. We fly around the world, we travel into space, and we harness the power of science to live longer and healthier lives. We've created the life we know as modern human civilization simply because we continually adapted. We changed in response to change. Societal change, technological change, and environmental changes. Yeah, everything changes, except for schools and education systems. Somehow, education got left behind. How do we let this happen? We're currently in an exponentially changing world. Take Moore's Law, for example. From 1965, there has been technological changes doubled every two years. You know, that's 50 plus years of exponential growth. Imagine what education would look like with 50 plus years of uh, exponential growth. Doubling, getting better at teaching and learning every two years. There's also exponential changes in society and exponential changes in the environment. That's most worrying. And these systems, society, technology, environment, they don't operate independently. They interact, they push, and they feed, and they propel each other. Our world is changing so fast, and if you're here tonight, educated and healthy, if you've got a home to go to with food, clothes, fresh water, money, then you're part of the small percentage on this planet that is least impacted by this exponentially changing world. You know, I cannot put this more simply. Education needs to adapt to this ever-changing world. For the majority of human civilization, our ability to adapt has been ahead of the rate of change. Well done, us. You know, we created, we innovated, we designed, we invented, we leveraged, exploited, we produced and produced and produced and produced. Yeah, pat yourself on the back. Us humans, we've done a pretty good job until recently. You see, we solely adapted to advance our own needs. And that's finally caught up with us. Now, instead of being ahead of the game, our ability to adapt runs the risk of falling behind the rate of exponential change on this planet. What was once a ball of slow change rolling down the hill and we could keep up with and even keep ahead of is now an exponential snowball of change racing down the mountain. I cannot state this more clearly. Systems need to adapt. Our students will leave school and as adults will enter a world of unprecedented change. Longer lives, more careers, high tech, artificial intelligence, changing social norms through globalization, climate change, extreme weather events, species extinction, in irreplaceable habitat loss, a warmer, more acidic, plastic-filled ocean that's rising, depleted natural resources, limited clean fresh water. You know the snowball is picking up speed and it's rapidly overtaking us. We owe it to our children to give them the skills to adapt now more than ever. Let's think about this idea of explicitly learning to adapt. You know, the skill itself isn't mutually exclusive. You don't just simply adapt. We change in response to change using situational specific mix and variety of skills. We're adapting all the time. And you're adapting right now, physiologically, behaviorally, intellectually, even spiritually. When we adapt, in no particular order and in all types of com combinations, we think critically because it's important to understand the change. 
We think in systems because we need to understand how one change affects and is affected by others. We think creatively because we need to think new thoughts, think outside the box and find many possible solutions. We collaborate and communicate. We talk, we listen, we ask questions and we present ideas. And we solve problems when we put a change plan into action. You know, education is the key. Education needs to change. The very functional concept of education needs to adapt to the real world. Schools themselves also need to be more adaptable. We also need to refocus what we teach so that we teach adaptability. School curriculum, pedagogy, assessment, it all needs to change. We need to reimagine how a whole community learns skills and values together. We need to redefine the purpose of education as just a part of lifelong learning for us all. What we teach at school needs to adapt. It needs to adapt to the constantly changing world and to the new age learner. We love the approach where documented curriculum provides a backbone, but it's never finished. It continually evolves and adapts. The idea that curriculum can be stored in like 84 folders and reviewed every five years, that idea is gone, it's dead. Day-to-day -day class schedules need to be open to adapting. We need to be open to new ideas, to see where students want to go, to experiment, to design, to review, to learn, to fail. Our school leaders need to be problem solvers. We need to say yes to good and new ideas and then adapt to make them happen. Structure's great, but it, you know, it needs to bend. Learning programs should integrate new technological platforms. We need to teach coding and robotics while, without losing the opportunities to learn low-tech skills and soft human skills. We need to promote the arts and inspire creativity. We need to recognise and reconnect indige with Indigenous wisdom. We need to embrace the modern while keeping our feet in the mud, deeply connected to nature. And we need to blur the line. No, we need to erase the line that separates school and education from the real world. Mm. Schools need to be places driven by growth mindset. We need to be not just open to calculated risk-taking, but we need to promote the concept of trial and error, and even more importantly, to be comfortable with error and failure. You know, as parents, we have a role to play here too. Whilst it comes from a place of love for our children, rather than keeping ahead of them and removing every obstacle and every difficult situation and every challenging relationship, that's not altogether helpful. As a teacher, I love to listen to student themes and ideas. I love getting sidetracked and tell stories. My minimalist lesson plans always allow me to bend and pivot while still delivering solid learning outcomes. This takes skill and energy. It takes boldness and trust. But teachers change plans all the time. There's no lesson that ever comes out like the lesson plan. What we need to do is be open and explicit with these change. We need to own the change and we need to let the change and how the learning adapted become a rich learning experience in itself. Mm. We need to allow students to decide and define their own learning experience. Allow them to build a lesson, structure a unit, to find the assessment. You know, you're better off just presenting concepts and then allowing students to decide how they are going to learn and how they are going to demonstrate and use their learning. We need to do better at explicitly teaching skills and values. We've got to stop just teaching information. We need to provide opportunities for students to experience a skill, reflect on it, get feedback, and then experience again. 
Skills and values-based learning programs are the key to teaching adaptability. Things like student-centered project-based learning, real projects with real problems, community service, entrepreneurial learning, thematics unit, integrated studies. These need to be the norm, not the exception. This is a new paradigm of learning, and it is emerging across the planet, but it's not moving fast enough. The industrialised approach to education with rigid curriculum, crushing homework, textbook style learning, you know, it's still clinging for life even as the snowball of change picks up momentum. The impact of the old way of teaching and learning on our new students in this new world is staggeringly bad. Anxiety, depression and suicide in today's children and teenagers are our worst nightmares. In the US, youth suicide is now the second biggest killer in people aged between 10 and 24. And over the past years, that rate has increased by 50%. And in the age bracket between 10 and 14, that rate has tripled. There is a lot of discussion about building resilience in our children, and adaptability is a foundation of resilience. I want us to be confident. I always come from a place of love, not fear, and I am confident. I think of people who history records as being ahead of their time. They were really thinking ahead of their time and adapting ahead of their time. People who are able to make huge impact, leaps forward in arts and science and technology by bringing something completely new, by adapting in a new way. Like Marie Curie, she adapted her knowledge into a new understanding of radioactivity. Jimi Hendrix adapted the guitar into a totally new sound. Mark Zuckerberg adapted how we connect and communicate. These were confident adapters. And we need to teach these type of adapters. We need to teach confident adapters who are change agents in their own lives and can be change agents in this world. At Green School, we want to drive an education revolution. We want to change the idea of what a school is and what a school does. When we look back, we see adaptation as not just a function of evolution, but as a driver of change. And when we look forward, the ability to adapt will define how future generations live on this beautiful planet. Our Green School graduates over the past seven years consistently rate their ability to move through the world with resilience as very to extremely high. That's like very to extremely high. You know, that's our gift to them. And it's a gift that will keep on giving over and over throughout their lives and for the good of the world. Perpetually adaptive lives. You know, when you think about it, that's all we're ever doing. This world, it's so beautiful. It's spinning alive, vibrant. It's full of challenges and opportunities for those of us who are nurtured and skilled to adapt. It must be our promise and our obligation to raise and to educate our children to have the ability to adapt, to navigate the challenges, to harness the opportunities, and to live with a resilience and a love for the humanity and for this planet, to bend like bamboo. Terima kasih. Mata suksi, thank you very much.